We are in a weird, unprecedented place. Everything's gone virtual. This is probably not how you expected to start medical school, but you're here, you made it, we're proud of you, so embrace it. <laughs> Do yourself a favor, watch this video in its entirety because I promise you, every tip is what I wish I knew before I started medical school. <music> to my channel my name is Natalia Correa for those who don't know me I am an M2 barely an M2 so I just finished up my first year at the FSU College of Medicine I decided to put together this video to all the M1s that are coming into FSU all the M1s that are starting medical school soon this is for you there's so much to cover so I'm just gonna go ahead and start diving right in. Welcome to Zoom Medical School. This is how you will be for the next couple of months due to the COVID crisis. So get used to it and find your favorite pajamas. Take it for what it is and move on. <laughs> In particular, FSU is one of the only medical schools that starts in May, so we're a little different. <clears throat> Thank you. Usually, FSU starts with anatomy, as many of you may know, but in the case of COVID-19, we have switched to virtual, so we're gonna go ahead and start with foundations too. Regardless whether you start with anatomy or foundations too, this is material you're gonna have to cover anyways. It's a lot of information. a whole host of things, right? Obviously, things are gonna be a little bit different since you've gone virtual and a lot of y'all won't be in Tallahassee. I'm just here to give you the tools that you need to succeed. So I'm gonna cover the basics, which is a lot. <laughs> a lot of people have been asking me, what books do I need to buy? A lot of our stuff is available in a virtual library. In most medical schools, a lot of the books that you will need are available virtually, but this is the one book that is a non-negotiable. 2020 version because, you know, that's the latest one. You need to get one. This is basically the medical school Bible. Now, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. One thing I did when I got my first aid book, courtesy of one of my classmates who is a genius for telling me about this, I got it uh, rebinded and spiraled according to blocks so I don't have to carry this big book around with me everywhere really easy to flip through and write my notes as i need it's about 50 dollars on amazon some people get it on barnes and nobles some people get it through their subscription with the ama regardless of how you get it you need to get it <laughs> like you need to get it so scholarships there are scholarships out there fsu has a particular website for you to look at scholarships i've applied to scholarships i haven't gotten any so that sucks but it doesn't hurt to apply most people are gonna pay with loans that's just the reality of it take out what you need and that's my best advice fsu in particular has a financial advisor in-house that you can speak to at all times so take advantage of her supplies a ton of you have been asking me like what supplies do i need to pay for this is and that you need a stethoscope like that's a non-negotiable i got this stethoscope um through fsu it's a litman it's the cardio four and i got my name engraved which i highly recommend another thing fsu required us to buy was this kit and this is also what you need at any general medical school I use the blood pressure cuffs a lot, especially when I went on my Panama trip. I didn't get this, but this is Jimmy's. Don't tell him I stole it. Just kidding. He let me borrow it for Panama. But this was another thing they wanted us to get. It's the otoscope and the ophthalmoscope. And we use these in CLC. So that was another expense that I didn't know about till I got into medical school. Just be aware that you're gonna blow money. Can I call them? Fun coupons. Moving on, laptops. You're gonna need a laptop for medical school regardless of what medical school you go to. So no, it's up to you and your preference. In particular, FSU gives you laptops. 
so a lot of you will be getting your laptops. It's a ThinkPad and it's a Lenovo, so it flips backwards and you can write notes on it. Exams are delivered through the laptops. There's no like paper exams. When we started medical school, we had exams written in-house. As the curriculum went along, they transitioned to MBM exams, which is basically questions made by the company that makes the board exams. As you utilize more of these questions in medical school, it's ideally supposed to prepare you to answer the questions on the actual boards. We use OneNote on the laptops and it's offered through the school. Most medical schools offer OneNote and I highly recommend that you learn how to use it when you get your laptop or when you get access to OneNote. I was a Mac user before and now I only use my Mac to edit my vlogs. I'm glad that I already transitioned because my laptop recently broke for whatever reason and I was able to save all my data because I had it on OneNote. So I would highly recommend using OneNote. A good way to organize your OneNote, um, which is how I've organized it, I make folders with each block. So for example, Foundations 2, and then in then I input the subjects. So if I'm covering biostats, I'll put biostats. If I'm covering genetics, I'll put genetics. For each sheet, I would put the title of the lecture. And then I would print the PowerPoint into OneNote. It's kind of complicated, but if you're interested in learning more about that process, just contact me and I'm happy to help. Always check your email and link your email to your phone. That's like a kind of like a non-negotiable. I know some people ask about, should I get an iPad? Do you use your iPad? Do you have an iPad? I never got an iPad. I was a Mac user and I knew we were getting laptops. So I was like, let me just wait and see how things work out. There's people in my school that do have iPads and they do use it as their primary source to write notes. In particular, FSU, the Lenovo flips into a tablet. I'm gonna show you. Laptop and it flips into a tablet. And it has a stylus. You can literally write notes like this. As you can see, it's touch screen. So this is the laptop that we have. You can flip back and type on here as you wish. I didn't feel the need to get an iPad just because I never really used an iPad before and I've learned how to use the school laptop. A big thing that I faced in my first year of medical school was resource overload. So you kind of get overwhelmed thinking, I'm not using those resources, should I be using them? Figure out what works best for you. Don't be afraid to try certain things because you don't know if something works better for you than what you've already been doing. So keep an open mind. Everybody's gonna want you to succeed. So everybody's gonna share all the resources that they use. I'm gonna share the resources I use and you find what works best for you. Since you guys won't be on campus for your first semester, and most people probably won't, really make the effort to connect with people through social media platforms like Facebook, like Instagram, like GroupMe. I know when we first started, I made a GroupMe for my class and that's our primary form of communication. It's pretty great and poppin' to be honest. So I recommend y'all do that too. So how to approach all the material. When people say that covering the material is like drinking out of a fire hydrant, <laughs> it's not. A joke. Regardless of how you cover the material, the primary thing you need to do is make sure you're covering the same material that your professors are covering. Whether you're looking at in-house lectures or whether you're using these external resources to supplement, make sure you're covering the same topics. Some people prefer external resources over in-house lectures just because they like the way the material is presented. And since lectures are not always required, you have the freedom to do what you want to cover the material. At the end of the day, the goal is that you learn what you need to learn and are able to apply it to treat patients, right? Take it as you wish. In the beginning, I tried to carry over what I did in my master's program, some stuff that I did in undergrad. I used a lot of Quizlet, did a lot of my own outlines. I ditched that and I started using the resources that I was introduced to and I found new study methods that worked for me. If something's been working for you for the longest time, that's fine, but it may not necessarily work for medical school. And so just keep an open mind and be prepared to adapt to the situation and take on new strategies so that you can succeed. Just gotta know 
hot in here. So what was most effective for me? The first thing I did was look at what was being covered in class. That's the first thing I would look at. Then I had my first aid to follow along. Again, my first aid book is spiraled. Don't sleep. Next thing I would use is Boards and Beyonds. Boards and Beyond is this online video modules that follow along the subjects that are covered in medical school presented by Dr. Jason Ryan. I do not get paid to share this. I'm just sharing what works for me. I use Boards and Beyond to supplement my studying and at the end of each video they have video quizzes that I would take in order to test my knowledge. Then there's Sketchy Micro that I use to cover the micro that was um, covered in Foundations 2. Later on as blocks went on I used Sketchy Path and Sketchy Farm. I also use USMLERX for practice questions. Some people preferred Kaplan question banks. It just depends what works for you and firecracker which is offered through fsu and they have practice questions and they have cases on there well, i know a lot of us didn't figure that out till later on and we really wish we knew earlier on but since you're watching this video you are ahead of the game another thing i wish i would have known earlier is the about the program anki i know i heard a little bit about it when i, I was in my master's program but i was very stubborn and i liked my quizlet and whatever it's a flashcard application that has time spaced repetitions it's just one of those things that you don't want to do but it works so you got to do it do it just do it. right um <laughs> Another thing is faculty practice material. Faculty will upload practice questions or cases, different objectives that further supplement the lectures that they already uploaded. I highly recommend you utilize those practice questions to your advantage. Let it, Walter. Oh, Walter, you're so cute. You're so gonna die. So, <laughs> yeah, so I highly recommend you take advantage of the practice material. For example, when we covered biostatistics, that's something that takes a lot of practice and the professors that we had provided practice questions for biostats and since we see biostats in every single block after we covered it, I always go back to those practice questions and use them to refresh my memory. I highly recommend you keep a record of those and you can always refer back to them. A lot of your classmates would like to collaborate, at least that's the culture at FSU and they'll share, you know, different things that are working for them, different videos. Upperclassmen will come back and share YouTube videos and different videos that worked for them for different subjects. Glance at them, see if it works for you. Yeah, you don't want to miss a resource that might have helped you and you just ignore it because you're stubborn. So just keep an open mind. Okay, so I'm gonna run you through kind of like the process of how I approach material. So what we do is my friend Roxy and I, we basically have an Excel sheet where we have all the videos that we need to cover, all the lectures we need to cover. And we include if it's covered by Boards and Beyond or if it's listed in Sketchy, you know, different things to supplement, we'll include those resources on there. So we get a good capture of all the material that we need to cover. Then, as we start covering lectures, whether we cover it in class or we cover it with a Boards and Beyond video, as I went along watching the videos, I would annotate for all the material I cover. So that when it comes around to step studying, you already have your first aid book annotated. It also helps you process the information as well. As you're watching the lectures on video, write your notes on the actual lecture slides. Uh, so that's another thing that I did. And I have this second screen that I use to project my, you don't need to get this, I'm just bougie and I really appreciated having more screen space. I use my laptop to write the notes and on this screen, while I'm writing my notes, I can play the lecture videos. So that's just another thing that I use. I'm watching my lectures, I'm writing my notes in my PowerPoints or in my first aid book. And then at the same time, I am unsuspending cards in Anki that are related to what's being covered in lecture. So by the time I finish covering the lecture, I've unsuspended all the cards that I need for that lecture. I go ahead and do those Anki cards to review what I just covered. Now, if I'm watching a Boards and Beyond video to cover the material, I do the practice quiz at the end of the Boards and Beyond video. Are we following? Moving on. So you want to set goals. Like I said, 
Roxy and I, we outline all the material we need to cover. I add up all the time of the videos that I need to cover for that exam. Let's say it's 500 minutes of video watching, right? I divide the number of minutes by the number of days that I have to cover that material, leaving about a week to review material. The week leading up to the exam, you don't want to be covering new material in an ideal world. It took me a really long time to figure this out and I really wish I could have done it before, but you know, you learn as you go. So shout out to my mentors that really took me under their wing and saved my life because I wouldn't be where I am today without them. Every day, you know, make your to-do list and try to keep up with this material so you're not and you don't end up cramming that's not what you want to do because you want to think long term you want to remember all the information so that you can perform well on future exams and then at the end you can be able to treat patients a week leading up to the exam you are just reviewing material you're doing your Anki reviews you don't have as many cards every day and you have more time to do your practice questions i use material that's given by the faculty and i use usmle rx and i use firecracker to do practice questions for anatomy, that's a different story, but you're not starting with anatomy, so that doesn't matter right now. And it took me a while to figure this out, but when I started leaving more time before exams to review material rather than covering new material up to the day of the exam, I noticed my exam scores improve. And I noticed that I had a better understanding of the material. So again, this is advice that I'm giving on what I've learned with time and what I would change if I could go back. I use an agenda to keep track of like my deadlines and my exam dates and things that I want to cover. I use the Flora app to basically lock my phone while I'm studying. You set intervals of like 25 or 50 minutes to study. If you unlock the phone and go to any other app that's not that, your tree dies. And it's a really sad day when your tree dies. <laughs> <laughs> so that just helped me. That's just one way to help me stay focused when I'm studying. Another tool that I've used is the Pomodoro clock. You can just literally Google this. And it's basically like 25 minute intervals of studying spaced with five minute break and then a 25 minute interval of studying and a five minute break. And that's worked for me too. So that's why I'm sharing. It's, I'm grateful that I kept an open mind to those resources because at the end of the day that helped me learn better. Be mindful that just because your friend really loves Anki and that's what works for them, Anki might not work for you and that's okay. Just find what works for you and stick to it. The whole point is that you need to cover your material efficiently, effectively, and again, think long-term. You want to retain this information. So cramming is not where it's at. No, God, please, no, no! Especially not in medical school. Step will always be lingering in the back of your head. Like, that's all people talk about. Um, especially when you get into M2 year, people are concerned, you know, am I retaining the information? Do I need to start studying? You know, all this stuff is lingering. A piece of advice that I've been given is that if you put in the time and learn thoroughly in each of your blocks it's essentially you studying for step because it's all the same material as of now that's how i've been approaching it i've just been focusing on passing my blocks hopefully when it comes around to dedicated step studying i would have already seen all the material so it's a matter of reviewing you will know what subjects you're good at and what subjects you just don't like and just learn to live with it and embrace it you, you can't be good at everything you just got to try your best and Keep it moving. Find your study partners, whether you're self-study or not. I tend to be a self-studier, but I still had, you know, those people to lean on, those people to have fun with, those people to pop quiz me. That's what I loved doing. People to vent to, people to save me. I know my first semester of medical school, I got kicked out of my scholarship house and I literally had to move around the time of my exam or after my exam and my friends literally helped me get all my stuff out of my scholarship house and move to a new place. You know, you go through crazy stuff in medical school, but you need that support system to lean on. So, you know, make those friends and those study partners. So when you don't understand something, you can count on your friends to explain it to you. In my class, I know we had people that were older than me. I know people that had, that came from the master's program, you know, years before me, there were people that were whole professionals before medical school so it's really cool to get to know your classmates and see like 
their background and what's unique about them because you literally never know where they come from or what they know and it's just cool to see how diverse our our classes and just to be able to connect with people regardless of how different we are that's something i really appreciated and i highly recommend like you really get to know your classmates get to know them support each other build each other up challenge each other or just really get to know them because you never know who you're gonna meet moving on to the next topic failure it's only failure when you don't learn from your mistakes like as cliche as it sounds or whatever like when i failed my first COC session, clinical learning center, when you have like, you know, standardized patients and you're supposed to do this physical exam on them and you, a faculty watches you through a camera and you get graded and then you find out later on whether you pass or not. I was like devastated because I always practice with the same people and we all left feeling confident. We would just really prepare ourselves and we practice the same way. So whenever I would fail and like my friends didn't, like it really hurt. Um, but you just like realize that it's really not a big deal. You learn what you did wrong, you correct it, you watch your video and your faculty is like really kind and they explain how you could have done things better. Sometimes it's not even that you do things wrong, it's just that you could have done it better. There's a certain standard that they want you to be at so that when it comes to taking your step to CK or things like that, you're more than prepared and you're not just like skimming by. So as annoying as it can be to remediate a test and like just feel like failing <laughs> in hindsight really value it because my you could see that your professors really care and they're really taking the time to help you improve so that's how i've learned to approach failure when i had to remediate again it didn't hurt as bad but obviously the goal is to always pass but if we always 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 succeed then i don't know how do you learn right don't get bogged down like if you fail or have to remediate like it's not a big deal you just get it and move on and for block exams i never had to remediate one of those thank god i've always passed if you're ever in the case where you have to remediate something like that you just speak to your faculty and they'll tell you where you have to improve like, if you really didn't perform well in a block then you make it up in the following summer between your first year and your second year because you have that summer off but you're gonna do great so don't don't even start to think about that stuff medical students are not perfect yeah. i'm just gonna keep it real so your support you're not alone in this journey everybody's rooting for you literally like walter look at him my biggest fan so don't think you're alone you have all your classmates you have your support coordinators shout out to you heather i love her at FSU in particular, you get assigned faculty advisors. So you have people that check up on you. There's counseling services that are available to you for free. And I know this is the case for most medical schools. So take advantage of that. I go to counseling. Sometimes you just need people to talk to and they give study strategy advice and they prepare you for step and different things like that. So take advantage of the counseling services, especially if they're free, like it doesn't hurt. M2s, M3s, M4s, residents, alumni, you can always connect with them at any school. Like well, my class is more than happy to help. Y'all are gonna have TAs to help and everybody's always welcoming and happy to help. So just ask, that's all it takes. Moving on to the next topic. <laughs> Medical school isn't everything. Like, yeah, it's a huge part of your life and your identity and what you do and what you, you're studying all the time. And yes, you know, like it consumes your life, it does, but make sure you make time for your life outside of studying. Keep up with your hobbies, whether it's cooking, whether you like to do sports. I know some of my classmates do I am sports at FSU. Uh, some people go to the gym, some people go running, some people vlog like I do. Some people do puzzles like I do, like look at all the puzzles that I have in my room. Just make sure you're really being conscious about your mental health and listening to your body. And if you're exhausted, get your sleep in. Medical students have lives. Don't don't let them fool you. Like, yeah, we're really busy, but we try to make time for what's important to us. So really just try to balance between studying and what you value. You know, don't disconnect from your loved ones. Like, if anything, that's the number one time like medical school is to stay connected to your family because you really need to stay sane. Uh, listen to your body and mind and know when you need a break and accept it. You really gotta stay healthy. That's it, that's my rant. Get involved in clubs, leadership, research, whatever you're passionate about. Take the time to get involved in it. 
apply to leadership positions, apply to scholarships, it never hurts to apply. Honestly, being rejected is better than not knowing if you would have ever gotten the position. I know in my first semester of medical school, I applied to multiple things and I got rejected. But at the end of the day, I'm proud of myself because it's like I tried my best and that's what matters at the end of the day. Rather than me wondering like, what if I would have gotten the position? You know, that's just... That's just not how I function. But you don't want to end up with a shoulda, coulda, woulda. Just apply, put your best foot forward, and if you get it, you get it. If you don't, then move on. There's going to always be more opportunities. And honestly, what's for you is for you. God's not going to take that away. Keep an eye out for summer opportunities, TA opportunities. So I know it may be like far away, but a lot of those applications open up early. First year of medical school is really hard, but it's obviously doable. Y'all have seen my journey and it's been far from easy, but here I am. I'm an M2. Yay me! <laughs> I really hope this helps. And if there's anything I miss and you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. I always answer my emails, the comments, my DMs on Instagram, anything. Wishing you all the best of luck on your first year of medical school. And you're going to kill it. You're going to do great. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know what other content you want to see. Best of luck.